15 Best Zone 7 Plants to Put in Your Garden Mealy Cup Sage, which must be treated as an annual in the north, is cold hardy in Zone 7. Standing 18 to 24 inches tall, this perennial has striking blue flowers and is useful, for example, in red white and blue color schemes. For the best displays, deadhead the flowers both to keep the plant fresh looking and to promote additional blooming. As a Mediterranean plant, all that lavender asks of you is to give it plenty of sunshine and soil that drains sharply. It likes its ground on the dry side, boggy soil would spell death for it. Technically a sub-shrub and often classified as an herb because of its wonderful fragrance, so popular in potpourri, treat it as a perennial flower. It stands 2 to 3 feet tall, so if you mass it together, you can create an eye-catching display. Candy Tuft is another ground cover, standing 12 to 18 inches tall. This perennial has brilliant white flowers, making it perfect for moon gardens. A plus in Zone 7 is that its foliage is evergreen and holds up well enough to offer winter interest. Since it's a Mediterranean plant and craves sharp drainage, give it a gravelly soil. The plant can get gangly looking in summer, so prune off the top one-third of Candy Tuft's growth after flowering is done. This keeps it looking tidy. A third ground cover that is a must-have for your Zone 7 garden is Yellow Alyssum. This is an ideal perennial to grow behind a retaining wall. Its trailing stems, packed with bright yellow flowers, will cascade down the wall and brighten it up. It's also a good plant for rock gardens. Thriving in poor soil, its main requirement is good drainage. The plant stands 6 to 12 inches tall. Divide it to keep it vigorous and for propagation purposes. Mix it with other rock garden plants for an even more colorful display. Costa is one of our most popular outdoor foliage plants, and with good reason. There are a variety of sizes and colors to choose from, and it's easy to grow as long as you can keep the deer and slugs at bay. Divide it in spring to propagate it and rejuvenate it. Costa makes a great edging plant. It can also serve as a backdrop for other plants, especially a good-sized cultivar such as Big Daddy. One of the blue-leaved types, it boasts large leaves, one foot long, on a large plant, two feet tall. The more colorful plantain lilies often lose some of their color as the summer progresses, but Big Daddy holds onto its blue color longer if grown in full shade. Not as well known as the common bleeding heart, Decentra spectabilis, the fringed type is actually favored by some gardeners due to its more attractive foliage. One trade-off is that the plant is smaller, 12 to 18 inches tall, and another is that the flowers are less impressive. Although this perennial can survive full shade, it flowers better in partial shade. Japanese painted fern is a short fern. Its maximum height is 18 inches, but it usually stays smaller than that. It's valued for its tricolored foliage which is silvery, purplish, grayish-green. It's easy to grow once you get it established. To that end, work humus into the soil when you first plant it. Japanese painted fern dislikes too much sun and too little water, so your main care tasks are installing it in at least partial shade and mulching it so that the soil retains moisture. The fronds will lose some color in summer but not as much if you give the plant full shade. Remove fronds that have brown to keep it looking good. Black-eyed Susan is common but has an uncommonly lovely flower. This long-blooming perennial stands 2 to 3 feet tall. Native plant lovers in North America will want to give it a spot in the native perennial sun garden. Black-eyed Susan is drought-tolerant, so irrigating it won't take up much of your time, but it does spread. You may end up occasionally having to pull it out of areas where you don't want it growing. Canna lily isn't a true lily, genus, lilium, but its flowers have all the flamboyance we associate with classic lilies. The Tropicana type gives you the bonus of variegated leaves. Canna grows from a rhizome. A sub-tropical and tropical plant, you will have to dig the rhizomes in fall to overwinter them indoors in Zone 7. Canna can reach as much as 6 feet in height, tall enough to function, in mass, as a summertime hedge or as the backdrop for shorter plants. Whereas Canna is a tender perennial and shines in summer, Crown Imperial is a cold hardy perennial in Zone 7. It gives you great color on a tall plant, 3 feet, in spring. It grows from a bulb, which should be planted in fall. 
It can be short-lived, but at least pests tend to leave it alone. This is probably due to its skunk-like odor, which repels deer as well as smaller pests such as voles. Some great landscape plants come up short in the aroma department, so think twice before declining to try Crown Imperial just because of its smell. Aslepias tuberosa is a butterfly magnet, but it is also a lovely plant in its own right. Mass several plants together whether you want to attract butterflies with it or just to appreciate its beauty more fully. This perennial stands around 1 to 2 feet tall. It is drought tolerant once established and may even spread naturally by seed if you don't remove the seed pods after flowering. Standing 5 to 7 feet tall, Joe Pie Weed is a stately plant that works well in the back row of a native plant garden. It blooms in late summer after many perennials are done flowering for the year, so it is useful for gardeners planning for sequence of bloom. Since it is a wetlands plant in the wild, its main requirement is evenly moist soil. A traditional cottage garden plant, hollyhock is another stately specimen. A row of hollyhocks growing along a white picket fence forms a classic rustic design. The six-foot stalk is studded with flowers that cling close to it, with minimal foliage to get in the way. This makes hollyhock the ultimate tall, skinny border plant. It can be a short-lived perennial or a biennial plant. Give it sun, water, and organic matter and watch it grow. Ornamental grasses give you another option for your Zone 7 perennial garden. They complement your flower choices well because they offer traits most flowers lack. Maiden grass boasts a graceful form on a 6 to 8 foot frame. It has coppery flower heads in early fall that later become silvery white plumes. Its stems also become red in the fall. Maiden grass provides much needed winter interest if you wait until spring to remove the old stems. Large plants have their uses, but gardeners who have small yards will generally be seeking smaller plants. Many of the latter fall under the general heading of ground covers, and lilydurf is one of the most popular of these types of plants. This flowering perennial stands 9 to 18 inches tall and is valued for its foliage as well as its flowers. It can spread via rhizomes and can be invasive, so check with your county extension before planting it. Practice slug control for this plant. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more interesting videos. And please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm.